Hi, Gary Stearman. It's Friday. It is the 29th of June. And by the way, June is just about gone. We're headed into the hot summer months. And those hot summer months are going to be boiling in the Middle East. Mohammed Morsi was just sworn in this day <clears throat> as Egypt's leader. And uh, by the way, he announced a unity, a solidarity uh, between the Egyptian government and the Muslim Brotherhood. By the way, interestingly, big things are happening on uh, Israel's southern border. And I, and I think that uh, we're going to see more of this in the coming days. I have here an article <clears throat> about Al-Qaeda. Now, let's stop and think about what happened in Egypt. Uh, Egypt had its uh, spring uprising, the Arab Spring, and everyone thought this is the beginning of a new era of peace uh, in the Middle East. Well, the Arab Spring went through many contortions. Uh, now uh, it has resulted in a new government, uh, it's essentially dominated by the Islamic Brotherhood. An Islamist government is never a good thing uh, because they are always militant. But the important thing is a, a note that I have here from Debka file, and the headline is Al Qaeda behind anti Israel attacks from Gaza and the Sinai. Well, that would be from Egypt. Uh, the common thought in America is that, hey, we've taken care of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. Uh, that's all over and done with. It's just a matter of a little cleanup now. Al Qaeda will be gone. Well, Al Qaeda has moved, Al Qaeda is in Iraq. Al-Qaeda is in Syria, and most especially Al-Qaeda is in Egypt. Al-Qaeda fighting elements from Libya are spe spearheading much of the violence against Israel from Sinai and the Gaza Strip since early June. A dangerous development. Israel, Hamas, Egypt, and the U.S. prefer to conceal, according to these observers. Deeply concerned, Cairo has just po posted its elite counter-terrorist unit called the 999 unit in El Arish. And you may remember El Arish from the Six-Day War of 1967. It was a trigger point in that war. Uh, the 999 unit has been sent to El Arish on Egypt's border with the Gaza Strip and along the northern sector of its frontier with Israel in an effort to counter the newly arrived jihadis. And so you now have Al-Qaeda not in Afghanistan, not in Iraq, but now in Egypt and in the southern portions of Gaza, let's just go ahead and say all of Gaza, and Al-Qaeda is a growing force. Uh, and there is a footnote here, Israel also faces a menacing Al-Qaeda presence on its northern border in Syria. Uh, I have here a, a note uh, from uh, Debka file, <clears throat> dated June 26th, unconfirmed from Un unconfirmed reports from British, French, and Turkish sources uh, say the British Special Operations Forces crossed from Turkey into northern Syria uh, last Tuesday, that's four days ago, <clears throat> and advanced up to 10 kilometers inside the country. The same sources report heavy fighting around the Presidential Guards compound on the outskirts of Damascus. Uh, they have encountered Al-Qaeda in Syria. So Al-Qaeda is becoming a very big part of what's going on in the Middle East, in Egypt to the south, in Syria to the north. Uh, and here is a paragraph that I wanted to get to. This is very important. This is kind of a payoff paragraph, if you will. Uh, and I quote, this move appeared to be a tie-in with Al-Qaeda Iraq's foray into Syria, believed to be part of a master plan the brainchild of Al-Qaeda leader uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri for the purpose of creating a ring of fire around Israel from the north and the south. So the reason I, I read these two news reports today is just to say that Egypt is deeply involved now with Al-Qaeda. And, and we need to get used to thinking about that because uh, in our minds for the last few years, Al-Qaeda has been the enemy in Afghanistan or the enemy in Iraq. Not so today. Uh, Al-Qaeda has moved into the Sinai, into Egypt proper, up into Gaza, and is now in the process of uh, <clears throat> solidifying its forces in Syria. 
Egypt is a hot spot. The Bible regards Egypt as a hot spot. And we have here from Ezekiel chapter 30, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy, and say, Thus saith the Lord God. Howl ye, howl ye, worth the day. So, so the prophet sounds a warning. And then he says in the next sentence, For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. And so the coming of the day of the Lord is near, now, this prophecy is specifically aimed at latter-day Egypt. And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, her foundations shall be broken down. I think this prophecy, because of the opening sentences in it, and again, it's in Ezekiel 30, uh, because of those opening sentences, it is timed, it is a timed prophecy, of events that are to take place just before the day of the Lord. Uh, again, it says a sword shall come upon Egypt. Verse 5 says Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia, which is, by the way, Nubia, and all the mingled people, Chub, and the men of the land that is in league, shall fall with them by the sword. Now, this describes the geographical territory of the Horn of Africa, all of Egypt, all of Libya, uh, let's just go ahead and say North Africa. The Lord pronounces latter-day doom upon the aligned forces in North Africa. What are the aligned forces in North Africa today? Well, the Muslim Brotherhood. And so we come to verse 6, Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Syene shall they fall in it by the sword saith the Lord God. And we've already written many times about the Tower of Syene. Syene is uh, simply the King James way of expressing uh, the geographic territory that we, we today in English refer to as Aswan. And of course, at that location is the Aswan High Dam uh, with its tower. And when Ezekiel wrote these prophecies, as we've said many times, there was no Tower of Syene. Today there is, it stands atop the Aswan High Dam, and it is used as a marker. Uh, the, actually, the, uh, the centerpiece of Egypt's destruction, uh, as given in, Is uh, in Ezekiel 29 and Ezekiel 30, uh, which we just read. Along with the news releases, again, Mohammed Morsi was sworn in today. Uh, he encouraged the Islamic Brotherhood. Uh, he encouraged Al-Qaeda, uh, believe me, he did, because Al-Qaeda is now moving in force up toward El-Arish, up into Gaza, and is going to be very much a part of uh, the war action that's continuing uh, from this day forward. So the news continues to build out of the Middle East. Read Ezekiel 30 when you get a chance, starting in verse 1. And just read about that. Look at a map and see if you don't uh, agree that very probably we're seeing some of these happen, some of these things happen even today. Gary Stearman, wishing you a great weekend. And by the way, uh, as we always say, and particularly in these days with wars, with rumors of wars, the buildup of military troops in the Middle East, keep looking up, everybody. He's coming.